the demand for advance orders of Sutter Kane's latest novel, In the Mouth of Madness. Hi there guys, this is your host Richard, with another marvelous video. Lovecraftian cosmic horror in the mouth of madness. Explain, reality is not what it used to be. How can you define the line between reality and imagination, sanity and insanity? After watching John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness, this line is surely blurred. In the Mouth of Madness is Carpenter's last film on the trilogy of Apocalypse, the preceding films being The Thing and Prince of Darkness. It is one of the best films by Carpenter, based on Lovecraftian cosmic horror, exploring the concept of how fragile reality is. The film's title is also inspired by the Lovecraftian novel At the Mountains of Madness. The antagonist, Sutter Kane, starred by Jürgen Prochno, has the power to flip the switch so that sanity is converted into insanity and reality is thrown into a blender. Sam Neill stars as the protagonist John Trent. Who is John Trent? Is he really a freelance insurance investigator or just another character playing his role in the novel written by Kane? The film follows Trent, whom our Kane publishing director hired to locate the missing horror author Sutter Kane. Things get crazily out of control as Trent searches for Kane. The movie's other stars are Julie Carmen as Linda Stiles and Jürgen Prochno as Sutter Kane. Let's now see how crazy you can get with the storyline of the film. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Sutter Kane. Reality isn't what it used to be. In the Mouth of Madness, 1994. The movie commenced with a scene in the psychiatric hospital where John Trent is brought in as a patient while he keeps shouting, You hear me? I'm not insane! The other patients also started repeating his words, proving that even madness was relative. Soon, we find out that Dr. Wren had visited Trent, who had painted the walls of the ward and even himself with crosses and narrated his past story. It is worth mentioning that one of the mental patients in the asylum was featured by Carpenter. Trent had been a brilliant freelance insurance investigator, and while he was having lunch with the owner of an insurance company, the owner requested him to work for Arcane Publishing, one of the leading publishing houses of New York. During their conversation, a man attacked them with an axe. He asked Trent whether he reads Kane's novels, but the man was shot dead by the police before Trent answered. Eventually, Trent meets the director of Arcane Publishing, Jackson Harglow, who assigned him to find Sutter Kane and bring back his latest novel, In the Mouth of Madness, to their office. You heard it right. The name of Sutter Kane's novel is indeed In the Mouth of Madness. The demand for advance orders of Sutter Kane's latest novel, in the mouth of madness. Harglow introduced Kane's editor, Linda Stiles, and asked her to accompany him on the mission. It was also revealed that the person who had attacked Trent was Kane's agent, who was driven insane after reading the manuscript of the latest novel. Linda explained that Kane's novels had caused disorientation, paranoia, and memory loss among the less stable readers. As Trent went to the bookstore to get some of the stories by Kane, he saw that Kane's fans were vandalizing the bookstore to get the latest novel. Trent was confident that all these incidents were nothing but publicity stunts before releasing the novel. When Trent started reading old novels of Sutter Kane, he began hallucinating visions where he saw humans converted into monsters, but he ignored them. He sees you. He sees you. Suddenly, Trent notices strange red lines on the covers of Kane's novels. When appropriately aligned, it formed the outline map of New Hampshire State, and a red mark was supposed to be Hobbs End Town. Trent was confident that Sutter Kane was hiding in that town as he and Stiles set out for the town. While driving, Stiles had some bizarre hallucinations. She went past a cyclist who was a mere teenager, but after a few minutes of driving, she saw the same cyclist, but he had turned very old. She was so engrossed in these events that she hit the cyclist, and when she went to help him, he said, Lie still. I can't get out. Come on. You won't let me out. Then he just got up and left. Soon after, while Linda drove, she found that their car had entered a strange tunnel. When they came out of the tunnel, it was broad daylight, and they had reached the fictional Hobbs Town. Linda again hallucinated a group of children chasing a dog aggressively, which Trent was unable to see. 
The town was picture perfect, but Linda stated that the town and its places were all related to Sutter Kane's novels. Even Mrs. Pickman of Pickman Hotel was a character written by Kane who kills her husband according to his novels. Though Stiles and Trent thought that Mrs. Pickman was charming and decent, the audience could see her husband tied up behind the counter. This scene forces the audience to believe that Linda's predictions about them living inside Kane's story seemed correct. But Trent still didn't believe her and tried to convince her of the difference between fiction and reality. But then, one after the other, unexplainable, bizarre incidents started occurring in the town, which even convinced Trent that there was something uncanny about it. Linda went to the town's church where she met Sutter Kane, who revealed that he had been writing what they wanted him to write for years. At first, no one really understood what he meant by they, but then it was revealed that they were the ancient monsters who were eager to reclaim planet Earth. We realized that Kane himself had been transformed into a monster. Trent found out that Mrs. Pickman, Linda, and all the townsmen had been converted into fierce monsters. He tried to escape from the town in his car, but no matter how hard he tried, he was teleported back to the aggressive, monstrous townsmen who were trying to attack him every time. Finally, when Trent and tried to run them over, he crashed his car and fainted. When he awakened, he found himself in the confession box with Cain and Linda, where Cain revealed that the public's belief in his writings had freed an ancient race of monsters arriving to reclaim the Earth. Cain also stated that Trent is merely a character in his novel whose responsibility it is to return the manuscript to Arcane Publishing. After passing the manuscript to Trent, Cain tore off his face and opened the portal for the monsters to appear. He points to the tunnel, which was the same tunnel that brought them to the town. As Trent ran through the tunnel, the grisly monsters chased him. They almost got him when Trent tripped and fell, but instantly found himself on the country road. Back in reality, Trent destroyed the manuscript and went to meet Harglow after returning to New York. After narrating his story to Harglow, he said that Trent had been sent to fetch the manuscript alone and not with Linda. You say I sent with you, did it? But I know I sent you off alone. He had delivered the manuscript months ago as it was on sale, and a film had been adapted from it. You delivered that manuscript to me months ago to me personally in this room. Trent encountered a reader of the new novel whose eyes were bleeding and killed him with an axe. He was arrested and eventually sent to a mental asylum. After Trent finished narrating his story, Dr. Ren considered it to be a meaningless hallucination and left. The next day, Trent found that the asylum had been abandoned and he heard the news that monstrous creatures had taken over the world while suicides and mass murders were occurring at random. He went to watch the film In the Mouth of Madness and found out that he was the main character and all that had happened to him was being shown in the movie. Trent started laughing hysterically on seeing the movie before he broke down to cry as he realized that he had been a character of the novel all along. Trust me, friends, I know this is a brief synopsis of the movie, but every second, every scene, and every dialogue of the film is essential. You hear me? I'm not insane! The movie is just another masterpiece from the master director. The character of Trent has been one of the best performances of Sam Neill, with a perfect script by Michael DeLuca. The film is a classic tribute to H.P. Lovecraft, as the film refers to many of his stories and themes. Mrs. Pickman borrows her name from Lovecraft's Pickman family. The Sutter Kane novels have titles inspired by Lovecraft's stories, like Whisperer of the Dark was taken from Lovecraft's The Whisperer in Darkness, The Thing in the Basement was taken from Lovecraftian story The Thing on the Door step, and so on. The film has developed a cult following and has earned a lot of positive reviews in the following years. He sees you. He sees you. He sees you. Power, hungry, Lovecraftian horrors. Carpenter's homage to Lovecraft is not confined to the similar titles. There are moments in the film when quotations from Lovecraft's short stories are narrated. When Trent and Linda approach the church in Hobbs End Town, this is what Trent read about the church loudly, the seat of an evil older than mankind and wider than the known universe. This place had once been the seat of an evil older than mankind and wider than the known universe. This quote is taken directly from Lovecraft's The Haunter of the Dark. When Linda confronted Cain inside the church, Cain confessed that he had been writing whatever the ancient monsters wanted him to. But they were telling me what to write. 
Carpenter wanted the apocalypse of this film to be the cosmic old one, evil kind. Thus, the monsters in this film can be considered as Carpenter's vision of Cthulhu mythos. From the church scene, we get the first look at the monster that was coming to reclaim the Earth. There was an artwork hanging in the reception of the Pikmin Hotel displaying a couple with the church of Hobbs End in the background. The position of the couple kept changing, and finally, Trent was shocked to see that the human couple in the artwork had changed entirely in two a monster couple. This signified that the time had arrived when all the human beings of the town would be converted into monsters. Soon we find that Linda and Mrs. Pickman had been transformed into gruesome monsters. Thereafter, Trent found that the townspeople had also been converted into aggressive monstrous beings who threatened to attack them. During the climax, Kane revealed that the Old One monsters were ready to enter the world of reality through people's belief in Sutter Kane's horror stories dictated by them. Until then, Kane had successfully held them back behind a massive door located in the church's basement. Finally, when Kane opened the portal for them in the church, the wall of monsters entered our world and wreaked havoc all over the planet. Mrs. Pickman's creature was fashioned using miniatures. There was a shot where Linda acts monstrously by spinning her head around. This scene was performed by a contortionist wearing an upside-down prosthetic mask. But one of the best creations in Carpenter's career is the full-sized wall of monsters that needed over 30 people to operate. The entire production was a group effort by KNB EFX Group that included Robert Kurtzman, Greg Nicotero, and Howard Berger for special makeup. These Lovecraftian monsters were almost on the same standard as The Thing, being so massive and tentacle-heavy. Reality versus fiction as seen in the mouth of madness. In the mouth of madness is a metafiction depicting a story within a story. Whatever we see in the movie is the storyline by the fictional horror writer Sutter Kane, which Trent realizes at the end of the film. The meta theme has also been used in the dream sequence, where we see Trent experiencing a dream within a dream. Reality and fiction have been tossed repeatedly in this movie, so the audience gets absolutely confused. There was a scene where Stiles told Trent that if most people started believing in fiction, it wouldn't be long before fiction got converted into reality. The Hobbs End town itself was a fictional town from the horror story by Kane that we find out towards the end. Watching a young cyclist transforming into an older man within minutes, crossing a tunnel at night and arriving at the other end at broad daylight, changing the artwork in the hotel reception all confirmed the fictional image of the town. This film highlights the fact that fiction remains imaginary as long as you don't believe it, but gets converted into reality when you start believing in it. As soon as the reader started believing the fictional horror stories by Kane, fiction was transformed into reality, hence opening the portal for the monsters to enter the planet. Would you believe that the cover pages of all the novels written by Sutter Kane were different scenes from this movie? The cover page of Haunter Out of Time shows the scene where the Old One's monsters were whispering the stories to Sutter Kane. The Hobbs End horror shows the Old Church and Mrs. Pickman's monster, while the Breathing Tunnel depicts the scene when Trent runs through the tunnel to reach the real world. Even if I assume that after reading Kane's novel, Trent became mentally unhinged and everything else was his hallucination, then the question arises, how was the film made with Trent? as the main character. Even I feel confused now. In my opinion, watching the film once is not enough to solve the interconnected mystery of reality versus fiction and sanity versus insanity. If you come up with any other theories, please let us know in the comments section. Till then, let us believe in fiction as well as reality. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.